I love to interact with complete strangers in friendly ways. I find it incredibly satisfying. So on the greenway, when I cross paths with a jogger, I'll often pump my arm in the air just to encourage them. At the grocery store, I'll often compliment a woman on her clothes or her accessories. Or just like a few days ago, I received a notification from FedEx telling me that my package had left Tennessee at 7.24 in the morning. I checked on my trusty Google Maps, and that was roughly 10 hours away. Yet the delivery man rang my doorbell only seven hours later. Clearly something went amiss in the notifications, but I greeted the FedEx employee by saying, you must be the fastest man alive. And I could just tell that the guy was so proud of my compliment. He put his hands on his hips and said, it's my job to be fast and I do what I can. So we enjoyed what Barbara Fredrickson at University of North Carolina calls a micro moment of connection. And that takes me right into quality connections. A micro moment of connection is exactly what I just described. When two people look at each other in the eye and connect meaningfully, like they're both saying, I got you, I know what you mean. Whether they are strangers or lovers doesn't matter at all. What matters is that the connection happened. Now here's the magic of those micro moments of connection. Fredrickson's research shows that those who experience more of them are less prone to a slew of diseases that we all want to avoid, like inflammation, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and Alzheimer. Now that's already a very good start. And to validate what I just shared, let's look at a completely different research design and see what it says. One of the most thorough and inspiring research in human flourishing and longevity of all time has been conducted at Harvard Medical School since 1938, and it's still going on today. 724 men have been followed very precisely from their college years, through the Great Depression, World War II, and all the way to their deaths. Researchers have regularly interviewed them and looked at their bodies, blood work, and brain scans to assess their mental and physical health. I've had the privilege of studying directly with George Valiant, former director of the study and the man who led the whole effort for the longest period. And here's how he sums up its findings. It's all about love, period. And that's where, possibly just like you are right now, I went, what? So he explained, the study shows that the best predictor of who has a happy and healthy life over and above any more expected factor like quality of sleep, exercise, biomarkers, education levels, social and marital status, smoking, and even gene pool. The one thing that most closely resembles a magic bullet when it comes to having a happy and healthy life is the quality of our relationships. Now that's powerful stuff, but it doesn't end there. If you think about it, you'll see that all living things are attracted to what gives them energy, whether it's the sun, water, food, or a helpful and energetic colleague. And all living things are also trying to stay away from what depletes their energy, like having to fight the elements, being seen by a predator, or interacting with that grumpy old guy who never has anything good to say. I'm sure as I've given those examples, a few names popped into your heads. <laughs> now we all have people in our lives who energize and renew us. Let's call them positive energizers. And we all know others who have the opposite effect, the energy vampires. But we sometimes forget to check in on the impact that our energy has on others. Now hear this. Research finds that the highest performing organizations have three times more positive energizers than normal organizations. And the best each of us can do to get there is to be one. So if good relationships help us be healthier and perform better, and since we're already there spending about half of our waking hours at work, we can all benefit tremendously from creating more quality connections at work. So here's our action item. Take a few minutes to think about how you can foster more moments of micro connections that will feel natural and elevating to you and create a couple new rituals for yourself. Maybe it's first thing in the morning. Make it a ritual to go wish a good day to a colleague, whether it's in person or over the phone. Maybe it's at lunch to renew your own energy. Make it a personal rule that from now on, you need to have at least one micro connection before you get back to business. Or maybe it's whenever you join a meeting. Instead of arriving late and probably a little bit flustered, make a bigger effort to show up early and catch up with whoever is there. And here, I don't mean exchange a few platitudes about the weather. I mean saying something meaningful about that person's work or ask a question about their family to show that you care. And if you don't, then try faking it until you make it. 
I once had a boss who said that he much preferred a fake smile than sincere disrespect. I pondered it for a few minutes, and I gotta say, he's got a point, right? So for those colleagues that are a bit harder to get along with, a few random micro moments of connection here and there might not be too much to ask given the personal benefits they can bring. Research also tells us that when people experience positive relational energy, they tend to replicate it. So with a bit of repeated effort, you may even turn relationships that make you sigh into contacts that make you smile.